Dear leaders, movers and shakers, welcome to the Influential Executive Podcast. In today's interview, you'll hear all about entrepreneurship, marketing and branding from business coach Joey Falcone. Coach Joey recently sold his business, took everything he learned and now works full time on coaching other entrepreneurs and growing the coaching business called I Coaching and Consulting together with his two friends and business partners. Coach Joey is all about taking action, doing whatever it takes and learning along the way. And today's interview is packed with practical tips that you can apply to grow your own business immediately. This podcast is sponsored by our amazing company, Earn More, Work Less. We founded this management coaching organization one and a half years ago to help leaders and managers in big and small companies become stress-free so that they have more free time and achieve better results in their work. In other words, so that they earn more and work less. (laughs) How is that possible? By changing the way they do things. With our proven how to work stress-free methodology, we've already helped Over 2,000 leaders changed their lives. And for now, relax and enjoy hearing about Coach Joey's personal stories, his adventures, and everything he has learned about business. Awesome. Joey, welcome on the Influential Executive. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to be here. Thank you guys so much. It is such an honor. I can't believe that I'm finally on and have an opportunity to speak with you guys. And plus, I miss you guys a lot. (laughs) We miss you too. (laughs) We miss you too. And I call you Joey, but actually we're used to calling you Coach Joey. Yeah, that's correct. Coach Joey is who I am. And and, uh, that's definitely definitely the way to to address it. So who is Joey? Besides the Coach Joey, what's your personal brand? So, you know, it's it's funny that you asked that. Um, It's actually a really great question. And... As much as I coach personal branding, I, my personal brand has really become what other people's brand is. It's so much about, um, you know, being who you really are, being clear, being concise. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm from New York. I like to be quick. I like to take action. Um, you know, that's me. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's like a movie sometimes when you think about me, because I, I tell, you know, I, I tell my wife it's so, it's so unusual in, social situations i'm kind of an introvert into myself and then we get out on the road and we speak and we coach and all of a sudden it's like you know the big show and the lights flicker and uh you become a you know you become a star so it's it's very interesting how um, i address my personal brand compared to how other you know coaches and gurus uh, build their brand and the way that i look at it when i build my brand building other people's brands have i confused you guys enough (laughs) <laughs> absolutely well, absolutely uh, well, uh, when i think of your personal brand i think i just have this image in my mind of joey standing in front of this big room few hundred people coaching speaking telling stories with a crutch in each hand <laughs> <laughs> and a badly broken yeah. ankle <laughs> yeah so i guess now that takes some explanation right yeah so as, uh, as you guys know, and as some of your audience may know, I've had the opportunity to travel around the world the last few years. And I guess that's part of my brand, right? Um, staying focused and pushing really hard. And sometimes pushing really hard uh, doesn't give you a lot of room for taking breaks and, and uh, you know, waking up late and, and kind of relaxing. So I did have a broken foot. And, and unfortunately, I, I walked on it all across the world uh, for several months before I addressed it and before it was just too bad to bear with anymore. Uh, so yeah, you guys had the opportunity to see me coach and speak in front of rooms with uh, with a really cool boot that I got from uh, Zurich and some some crutches and you know the show has to go on. That's that's one thing that I really believe in is uh, we can't make excuses and excuses like that can't stop us. Yeah, and did you ever have a job before you became an entrepreneur? <laughs> oh gosh, I hate that word so much. It's so it, it gives me shivers every time I hear it. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> My career started out in the United States Air Force as a logistics analyst. So I spent four years in the U.S. Air Force uh, flying around the world on classified missions, 
briefing pilots on what it was that they were going to do, see, hear, and feel on their missions. Um, I hardly counted that as a job. It was a life experience for me. Uh, I grew up, I became a man, and I learned a lot about myself. And I learned a lot about my why during that time as well, which was pretty cool. Um, That kind of led to, uh, at the end of your four years, you have the opportunity to re-enlist or you could get out of the military. And as an intel analyst, it was a very specific career field. And I wasn't uh, really sure how I, you know, how I wanted to proceed. I really only had a couple options, join the FBI or the CIA uh, or try something new. Well, my dad had been an entrepreneur, you know, for quite uh, a long time in his life. And um, I I realized that I needed to, you know, maybe I needed to branch out and and keep growing my horizons. So I got into supply chain logistics. I know that's going to drop a lot of people's eyeballs because, first of all, it's a big, crazy word that doesn't mean a lot except moving freight from one place to another. Uh, But I, I spent about 12 years in a career field. Uh, you know, whether it was sales, operations, and then, you know, ending up in creating and growing really large brands for major, major uh, corporations. Finally, uh, you know, I said, that's enough. I'm making too much money for too many people and not enough for myself. And I took that leap. And from that day forward, uh, it's been quite a long time now. uh, I have not had a job. And I don't intend to ever have a job ever again. (laughs) Uh, We were just about to offer you a position. Uh, well, you know, for you guys, we, we may be able to make some some, uh, some room to, to wiggle there. <laughs> so, so, Joey, you said, like, you named quite some things you've been doing. So, how old were you when you switched to becoming or to being an entrepreneur? I know that you are right now around 30. Um, so, you are pretty young. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 38. I'll see. So yeah, I just have the baby face, right? That's how it goes. <laughs> so um, I, when I uh, when I left corporate America, I, I actually I started um, supply chain logistics consulting firm, and I was twenty eight years old. Um, after uh, after a couple of years of doing that, I had went into owning um, a moving company actually, and we we grew the moving company uh, to, to several different locations and. Uh, at that point, I had been introduced by my business partner to the world of uh, international coaching and speaking. And from that point until now, that's what I've been doing. And I, I don't see myself uh, ever not being a coach in some format or another. But I will tell you that, you know, my mind spins like every great entrepreneur. And uh, every day I'm always thinking about, you know, how can I help other people? How can I, you know, create a business to solve a problem or provide a solution to somebody? So. Um, you know, right now I'm partnered in a company called iCoaching Consulting. We are an international business coaching uh, and consulting company. And um, I'm always thinking and looking and, and, and finding new opportunities. So uh, I like to grow a lot and I like to learn a lot and I like to, you know, continuously uh, make more money, which is kind of what helps the whole operation work. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good lifestyle to have. Cool. And if we go further back in time, all the way back to when you were eight years old. Little Joey. Little Joey in elementary school. Yeah. Which kid were you in class, in school? Which kid? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question. I don't look back into my past that often. And um, this is probably some mindset coaching, right, that I have to get into. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I, I didn't have a, a bad childhood, and maybe that's what it was. I hear these stories so often of these great speakers and it starts with this, you know, broken childhood. Yeah. My, you know, very common. My parents were divorced, but we, you know, we weren't from a poor family or anything like that. Um, you know, me characteristically, I was athletic. I was authoritative. I was the kid that got in trouble a lot for, uh, speaking too much in class or talking out loud in class. Um, I did have really good grades if that counts, but, uh, I found school not always to be challenging. And I, I remember learning at a very young age, um, that a lot of these things I was learning were social skills and not academic skills. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of been taught by, you know, people from the outside at a young age that, um, you know, a lot of these things aren't actually used in life. And a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things that I was learning in school had nothing to do with the books. It had to do with what was around me and it had to do with my environment. Brilliant. And I see some parallels with what you do right now as well, because you still talk a lot. 
<laughs> I love it. It's so strange. Yeah. In, in certain situations, I'm super outgoing and I love talking and, and, and then some situations uh, socially, I'll be the, you know, the, the husband sitting in the corner or not wanting to go and uh, everyone else is sitting there having fun. Maybe I need to take some dancing lessons. I think that's what it is. Oh, that's a great idea. I know and you guys are awesome. Damn, yeah. You just you just spoke about family and about your wife. So I'm, I just have a very tricky question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Like, how do you how do you make your family happy? Because you travel a lot, you're growing businesses all over the world. So is there something like a life work balance or how do you do that? Uh, you know, you guys are obviously, you know me well, but the audience will learn I'm a very simple person, right? I, I, I am, it's psychology is very, it's, it's something that I, you know, I study a lot in marketing, but when it comes to, you know, human emotion, um, I struggle with it a lot. And I truly believe, I don't know if there is a such thing as a work-life balance. You know, each person on this earth is, is an individual, right? Everybody's different. Um, so for you to be able to say, you know, I need to be home this much time with my, my family or I have to go take them to this many places, every person in every family is different. And I don't know how it's been working so well, but I can tell you the number one factor is my wife. Number two and three would be my two children. I mean, they, they make the operation run when I'm not home. We run our home just like a business, right? You know, I'm the, I'm the vice president. My wife is clearly, uh, you know, president. the chief executive officer. Yes, she's the officer. Uh, <laughs> she knows exactly everything that's happening. Um, she makes things run. And I, I think the most important thing is uh, when you talk about work-life balance, to me, it's not about how much time, it's about how quality that time is. So when you start talking about quality of time, I mean, there's so many different factors that go into quality of time. How do I make time quality? Well, first of all, I have to be you know, mentally and physically in shape, right? Because otherwise when I get home, I'm going to be sleeping. So that means I need to be going to the gym. I need to be eating right. My family needs to be healthy. Um, and then when we do things, we really try to optimize our time. You know, the reason why I travel and I, I, you know, I coach and I operate is obviously it's a business and we want to make more money and the more money affords us to do more things, right? The more money you have, the more opportunities we have. So, you know, before I had started my own businesses, uh, and I would work a nine to five job and we wanted to do something. It was a vacation and we had to plan it out months in advance and we had to struggle and we had to, you know, go paycheck to paycheck. And, and when we were on the vacation, we couldn't buy all the extra things, but now we can go on a vacation, you know, in a week and we can buy, you know, four plane tickets and we can fly anywhere around the world we want to. Um, and, and that's really where the quality lies with me. So, you know, just to kind of recap that really ridiculously long conversation. It's about, you know, the quality of the time that I'm having and not the amount of time that I do it for. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. And Joey, you, you made that step from being an employee to becoming an entrepreneur. So would you say that entrepreneurship is for literally everyone? Or do you have to really think a lot about who you are before you become an entrepreneur? Well, you know, this is, this is another question that a lot of people struggle with. This is a great question because right now um, is a very difficult time in entrepreneurship. Because of the fact that we have the internet and we have social media, um, it's very glamified, right? It's very glamorous. Anybody uh, can, you know, go on social media, go on Facebook and get an advertisement and, and see that they can, you know, join the funnel and become an entrepreneur. And it's, um, it's almost to the point where it's frustrating. Because I want everybody to have the opportunity to do things, but I also believe that everybody has a place. Not everybody's made to be an entrepreneur, just like I'm not made to be an NBA basketball player, right? Uh, I, I, I wish I could, but I could barely touch the net. So it's just not, you know, it's not in my cards. Um, this lifestyle, not that it's not even for everybody, it's not for most people. A very, very small percentage of people actually have all the different tools or can train themselves to have all those different tools uh, in their toolbox to maintain this lifestyle. It's not easy. Um, and that's why I get frustrated. Not that everybody's doing it, but that people think that it's just something that you give yourself a title, you know, an entrepreneur, or if you own multiple businesses, you're a serial entrepreneur, um, but they don't put in that time, work and effort. And, you know, there's, there's been a lot of heartache in my life. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I guess sometimes it's, it's like, I'd rather, um, you know, have an insecure, insecure lifestyle if that's the right word, and work 100 hours, then have a secured lifestyle and work 40 hours, right? Um, 
I don't mind putting in the extra work and the extra drive. Uh, you know, I, and I believe that's, you know, part of that competitive uh, nature inside of me. Uh, and you like the adventure as well, I reckon. Adventure is extremely important in your life. And to be quite honest with you, the first four years of, you know, my career when I was an Intel analyst, I didn't take advantage of adventure. Um, one, because I just didn't know that I was supposed to take advantage of it. And two, some of the adventure, uh, you know, it was just, it, it was different because of the job type. So a lot of things I did at night and things like that. Um, what I've come to realize over the last three, four years that I've been traveling the world now, um, adventure is, for me personally, uh, it's something that I need to share. So now what I realize is I'm traveling the world, but what, what I'm really doing is traveling the world to find all the best places so I could take my wife with me, right? We're, we're a pretty young uh, family. Um, so, you know, our kids are, are getting older. They're in high school and they're going to be graduating high school and going out. And now I found all the best places in the world to go. So as great as, as so many awesome places that I've been, right? I mean, Europe and Africa and Australia, um, I believe that I haven't adventured or have even felt how great it's going to be until I can share that, you know, with my partner. Yes, I like adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> skydiving. Uh, I mean, I've done all kinds of fun stuff. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. Skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the craziest thing that you've experienced in your life? So, uh, you know, I know you're supposed to be asking questions, but you have to define crazy, right? Um, you know, what, what, is, what is crazy? It, it, it really depends on how you define that word. Because, you know, jumping out of an airplane is pretty crazy, right? But so is flying in a C-130 with no lights on, uh, you know, at very low range, standing in a glass bubble looking for, uh, you know, enemy aircraft. So what, what, becomes, cra <laughs> what becomes crazy? Um, I think you, you covered it pretty, pretty well. For, for, <laughs> I would say both. Both of them qualify. <laughs> I don't know if I've done the craziest thing yet. It's so funny. I love doing all kinds of adventurous things. Um, but there are two things I'm not sure if I'll ever do. I, and a lot of people do them. It's not really that crazy. It's just I don't know if I'll ever bungee and I don't know if I'll ever hang glide. Um, right. I don't know. I have no desire. <laughs> no desire. Okay, that's that's interesting. That's very interesting. And were you also equally adventurous as a kid? Because you said you always had a quite big mouth, but you had good grades. So were you also so adventurous? Yeah, um, times were a lot different when I was younger, which wasn't even that long ago. It's crazy. But of course, riding your bicycle to different towns. Um, I had broken my arms so many different times from skateboarding. And um, yeah, I was definitely adventurous. Now, it's funny because I would, when we say adventurous, I'm very adventurous, but with a calculated risk, right? I, I'm very calculated about things. So when I, when I, I guess that would, for me, that's really a good way to define the adventurous and crazy, right? I love adventure. I'll skateboard and I'll, you know, skydive. But um, sometimes, you know, we'll go out on the lake house and the kids are, you know, climbing up a, a 50 foot tree and doing, you know, quadruple backflips off the tree. And I'm thinking to myself, that really doesn't seem like a smart idea. So I think calculated adventure is, is a little bit more uh, the way I would define it. Yeah. You protect the downside because you like to do it again in the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we, we know you very much as a marketing expert. And one of the things that I remember about your marketing knowledge is you had a moving company and in your marketing, you presented your business different than most other moving companies. Can you talk about what the difference is? How did you present your company differently and what the, does it do in the mind of the consumer? Um, it's a really, actually, it's a, it's a great question and it's a huge answer. So I'll try to be as brief as possible. Uh, but when we started the moving company in our market was ultra competitive because of the fact that where we live, we live uh, in Fort Myers, Florida, in the United States, and it's what we call a seasonal area. So a lot of people that live uh, in cold areas, let's say New York, move down to Florida to be warm, which makes a lot of sense, right? Um, so there are a lot of people moving. There are a lot of movers. There's a lot of competition. So, you know, what we had to do was continuously 
um, innovate, right? We had to continuously invent, we had to continuously uh, focus on what our competition is doing and how we can do it better than them. So a lot of our innovations came from uh, finding out what our competition was doing and finding out what the customer um, liked and didn't like about it and how did we improve upon uh, that formula to create a better solution. Um, one of the things I'm assuming you're talking about is the fact that we didn't, uh, we, we originally had trucks and, you know, blankets and boxes and we took a pivot, you know, we took a really hard look at what we did and we realized that we could save ourselves a lot of money and make a lot more money by creating um, a technology based platform where we didn't have any more trucks and we helped people load and unload, um, you know, with hourly rates. And that's really what kind of sprung us, um, you know, up above our competition. And now, you know, what's really interesting, and we love it, um, and this is what I like about business, is that, uh, you know, you see everybody kind of fall into that. So then we, we did that, and then all of a sudden all the other businesses started doing that. So we knew we were doing something right, right, because we were flattered that they're copying us. Um, now we needed to continuously grow and continuously innovate, otherwise we would have just became one of them. Exactly, you want to be always one or several steps ahead. Continuous. So could you give us, Joey, a few tips on how to think strategically? So, so be a little bit more specific about the question. How to st think strategically about what? And the only reason, and I'm not pressing you about it, but you know that my focus is, is very much on marketing and branding. Yeah. So that doesn't mean I don't run other businesses and I have a lot of operational and sales experience. So strategically in what situation? Yeah. And what you just described, thinking steps ahead about what your competition does and how can you constantly improve and get ahead of them? Wh which questions well, do yeah. you ask yourself? Well, it's, it's actually simple. And this is kind of, um, you know, a premise of my coaching and it should be a premise of most people's coaching and in most people's businesses, no matter what business I'm in, no matter what, function, whether it's marketing, branding, sales, any type of entrepreneurship, the first thing we always do is we think with the end in mind, right? So I believe this is something that, um, you know, that a lot of my clients come to me for and a lot of our clients come to us for is we take the end in mind and we, we map it, right? We plot it. We said, this is where you want to be. So if it's, let's just say 365 days, well, what happens in six months? What happens in five months? What happens in four months? And this becomes part of our, not only our marketing planning, but our business planning. So when we talk about strategy, it's most important to keep the end goal in mind. And then reverse engineer what needs to happen to get to that point. Oh, now you're talking dirty to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you like that. Dirt dirt. Talk. <laughs> yes. yes, that's exactly what we do. Reverse engineering is, is huge, right? It's, it's, the way that we decipher what our competition is doing and how we can make it better. Not only just our competition, but you know, how, how do we reach our end goals? How do we get something done tomorrow? Um, what am I trying to achieve specifically uh, during this conversation that we're having right now, right? And then I can work backwards. Interesting. And Joey, when we think only about marketing, namely about social media marketing, because you are expert as well when it comes to really targeting the right people on Facebook or any kind of social media um, a platform. So when we now think about entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs ha has a great service and wants to target the right person, how do you think about your customer avatar? So where should I start and, and how should I think about defining the right people on social media? So what I would challenge, um, you know, the answer or the question would be before we get to the avatars, are you able to communicate your message properly, right? So if you can't even tell people who you are, how is it that you're going to be able to provide them a solution? And we need to be able to do that very clearly, very concisely. And for me, um, well, as you guys know, in other conversations, as quickly as possible, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so with that being said, once we can communicate our message properly, then we can start figuring out, you know, who is it that needs our solution, right? We don't sell products, we sell solutions. How can I provide my solution to my customers? Um, and these are just, you know, basic uh, audience building tips. But the very first thing I always do is I say, listen, did you solve this problem for yourself, right? Did you fix your own problem? And if you did, then what we need to do is we need to start with you as a centralized avatar. It doesn't mean that you only have one 
uh, buyer persona or one you know, targeted audience member. There's so many different ways to break that down, but we need to start really understanding how to divide them and sector them so we can provide the proper messaging to each individual audience. Super, super important. Mm -hmm. And are there, Joey, any really no-nos that you say those are the most common mistakes that I see people making in social media in general while advertising to, um, to their audience? Uh, you know, there's a couple. Let, let's just try to name a few of them here. The, the very first one is people forget, right? The most important thing you have to remember is people are on social media not to be sold to. They're on social media to be entertained, to congregate with their friends, right? To engage with their friends. So um, if you're on there and you're providing a, a very hard press selling message, most likely it's not gonna be responded to well. People wanna see you know, cats jumping off of chairs, doing flips into pizzas, right? You know, it sounds as weird as it is, we've gotta find ways to grab people's attention to be honest and not generic about it. So definitely, um, number one would be, you know, don't always sell, make sure that you're providing value. Um, a couple other mistakes, you know, let's talk about, you, you mentioned advertising specific. Um, a lot of people say, oh, advertising sucks. Well, why does it suck? Well, um, I put $200 into it. I lost all my $200. I have no idea what's going on, why it happened. <laughs> and I'm going to be very clear about something. Um, as much as I am an advocate of, of education and learning, I truly believe that there are people that are very good at what they do in this world. And there are people that are not very good at it. And for example, I am not a Facebook advertiser, but I know many people that are, right? So why am I going to uh, spend my, you know, the time that is it's very expensive on learning how to, you know, create a funnel or how to advertise on Facebook when most likely the results are not gonna be complimentary. They're not gonna be what it is that we're looking to reach. So um, number two is, you know, don't just just go out and say things don't work, whether it's posting on social media or advertising on social media without, you know, consulting a coach or consulting um, a, a source that actually knows how to do it properly um, and, and, you know, kind of use those methods. So those are two big things. I mean, I could go on and on and on for days about what people are doing wrong on social media, um, but I guess that's why you have to hire eye coaching and consulting. <laughs> And talking about eye coaching and consulting, what I really love when I just go on your website, I just love the logo, right? That you can design in cooperation with an amazing uh, with an amazing company. And I think lots of people when they start their business, they're like, okay, I have to create a logo and I have to create a brand book and and all of those kind of fancy names. Yeah. So when I start a business, what would be the first few steps that I would have to or I would want to think about when it comes to branding and marketing? When it comes to branding and marketing. Okay, so the very first thing is you, you're going to have to take that end result in mind, right? And that's mm -hmm. selling. So the two most important things you can do in your business is market and sell. So if you're trying to create sales, what do you do? Well, you can never start any type of marketing campaign without having a place to send people, right? So if I were to be on social media and say, guys, I have the greatest product. I'm the newest coach in the world. It's, it's going to change people's mindset. It's going to change people's lives and everyone's going to become a millionaire. Well, that's great. But if you don't have a place to send them, whether it be a landing page or a squeeze page or a website or some type of lead generating page, then you've lost, you've already lost the game because a high percentage of those people are never going to come back, right? So that's a big thing. Once you start your business, you need to make sure that you're setting up a vehicle for people to um, flow through your, through your funnels, to create a way to send your traffic to a place where you can generate those leads. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, I mean, I could go again, we could go on and on about, you know, how important the logo is, how important the colors are, how important the name is. But here's what's unfortunate about all those things that are very important. I've had clients that have lost out on six months of business because they couldn't decide on a logo. Oh. And to me, it's unacceptable. And, and to be quite honest with you, it's making excuses. So you would say 80, 20, just get out there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a logo. Just have a good product, have a good message and have something where you can send the people to. Yeah, that's definitely a great start. Listen, we're continuously updating what we do every single day. 
you can go on our landing pages on our websites on you know all the different types of vehicles that we have and they're continuously updated they're never going to be perfect there's no such thing as perfect because our audience changes daily the the message that we give to people is different daily the people that we speak to are different daily right whether it be in the united states or whether it be you know um, in other countries the way that we talk and feel and act, interact with our customers are different on a daily basis yeah that makes sense so it's it's a learning it's a it's a it's a process and you constantly continuously learn i'd uh, like to i'd like to take it to one of the next levels in business so once you start up you start getting business in and you start fulfilling their happy customers so you assemble a team you tell people how to do what you did and there's more and more people working together and at some point it may get a bit more chaotic and many entrepreneurs end up in a situation where they created sort of a prison for themselves where they have to keep working 70 80 hours a week because they simply cannot be missed and i remember one of our earlier conversations where you mentioned something quite remarkable and if i remember correctly it was something like this you mentioned that the moment you decided to work less that's when your business started to grow faster than it did before. Yeah, it's, it's again, one of the foundations of my coaching. And uh, during the moving company, I, I had uh, gotten myself to where I had been sick. And I don't mean, you know, like uh, the flu. I mean, I worked so many hours and so much time that I was overstressed. I had high anxiety. I had to go to the doctor. And I started saying to myself, I need to make changes. I can't continuously work in my business. I'm not growing my business. I'm not working on my business. How can I, how can I do this? And it kept coming back to me. I need to hire a manager. I need to hire a general manager. I need to hire a general manager. And what did I say to myself? The same thing that my clients say to me. We can't afford to hire a general manager. <laughs> the fact is, I couldn't afford not to hire him because if I didn't hire that general manager, who knows what would happen? The business may have gone under. So, you know, it's part of my story is when I hired another person to do what it is that I was doing, right? And I'm always looking for people way smarter than myself to do that. Um, I spent more time on growing the business and made more money. And, and that's, you know, that's huge. I, I mean, I have, a, you know, thousands or hundreds of case studies, but I could talk about yesterday. I got a text message from uh, one of my clients and it's the same thing. And this is, a, this is uh, not a physical set of attributes this is a mindset issue because i went into a uh, coach uh, a two-day session in um in north carolina with this with this client with this organization and they had all of the right pieces right all of the puzzle pieces were on the table but they just weren't put together now the greatest thing was it's a very successful business but they're looking how to get to that next level well just by getting out of their own way and hiring a new sales manager and recreating their pricing package, they've now had an increase of 30% profit. They've had their, a record month. Um, they've hired the sales manager, they have new employees, and they have a new sales program. The, the whole point of this is not to say how you know, great the coaching was, it's to say the fact that they were smart enough to get a coach, right? Because when you get the coach, the coach can see what you can't see. Yeah. And that was the most important. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's, harder than the actual coaching for me and that's to let people know and to prove to them let them feel comfortable enough to know that's what they have me there for so joey you you were a coach you coached i don't know tens hundreds of people already uh, online or face to face so yeah. how do you uh, what would you advise people to do when they want to hire a coach what they should think about or which questions should they ask to find the right coach for them you know, I don't know if people know who the right coach is for them. I don't think that's something that you can choose. Now, uh, you know, we could break this a couple different ways. Obviously, emotionally, uh, you're not going to have a coach that you just don't get along with, right? So I don't think I need to teach people uh, how to get along with people. I, I don't believe that's what my job is. What <laughs> I do believe is you need to be in the right types of environments, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, if you're at... Uh, engaged with people in retreats or you're engaged with people at seminars and you're you're dealing with people that have those same successes you know how can they align you with the right people 
Now, uh, I know that you guys would be a prime example. When you get coaching from an organization, do you pick the coach or does the organization say, we think or we believe based on your needs, this is the best fit? And the answer should be that the organization is looking out for you, not looking out for themselves. And they're going to do whatever it takes. I mean, there's been countless amount of times in my career that I've passed off assignments to other coaches to make sure that the customer was their customers needs were were fulfilled that's the most important part to me yeah and we experience it ourselves with you right because yeah. when you guys coach and i coaching and consulting there's such an amazing group of people and each of you have different specialties and you have different personalities and you help with different things in different moments when i get stuck in my head and there is your business partner pretending as if he's telling a story to the whole group while the topic is exactly just for me getting me out of my head and another time when alexander was stuck in his head overthinking things then you come and and use your streak like now get out of your head i want the answer right now so it, it's yeah. really beautiful to be coached guys by you because it's so so uh, rich what you can deliver personality yeah. wise and content wise yeah I, I like that description and and for me uh, rich feels so good and it actually is what makes us unique um, when you deal with our organization it's it's not always a one-on-one -on -one. Um, it's a team effort and that's you know that's something that I really appreciate because everybody has different strengths to bring to the table um, you know, as much as I like to pretend like I'm the best person at everything, I'm not. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I love working with my business partners because we each have something to bring to the table. And those things combined are what make us, you know, better than our competition. The, the one thing, the one biggest thing that I learned from you guys as coaches is the power of positivity and to always see the positive. I think that that is what people often need. And the one situation that I have in mind is during one specific coaching class where uh, I think there were about 100 or 150 people in the room and the people who wanted got the opportunity to do a one minute presentation. Yeah. And in the feedback <laughs> on the presentations, the feedback was always positive. And at some point I, I appreciated that, I liked it. And at some point, the, this lady came to the front of the room and she was very timid, had gray hair, didn't really stand out. I hadn't seen her before. And she stand, stood in front of the room and she mumbled some words and I couldn't really hear what she said. And I remember asking myself, I wonder what positive they will find <laughs> in this. And there the comment was. A big applause from the coach saying, wow, you got up and walked to the front of the room. You put yourself out there. You did it. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what's really cool about that is, um, and you'll, you know, when you get people listening to this, everyone's going to say, oh yeah, well, I don't always, you know, want people to blow smoke up my butt, right? I want to be told the truth. And the truth is that we know when and where is the right time to either push or pull a client. And that's another thing that we really excel at um, because there is no question in my mind that, you know, one of the, my business partners is, is, is absolutely the most positive smiling person in the world, but you'll get me at an event and I have no question whatsoever that I will sit down and rip into somebody. Right? So um, again, it's, it's the right place and the right time. And you have to know when to do that. Yeah. We could have been hard on people in certain situations like that, and it may have helped them, but until we know how those people react to a situation that, you know, that was what the best decision was at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And I believe that many people are very good at being, being their own critic mm -hmm. and seeing all their own improvement points and things that are not yet at the level where they want to be. And just helping them see the good and the positive and the achievements that they can be proud of that also builds that confidence that you can build on to actually work on the next step yeah joey i have a question because you run a successful coaching organization to, together with two other business partners if i'm from right so you are three men 
how does that work how do you keep a healthy relationships because you're as well friends and you are business owners all together how does that yeah. work can you give us some good relationship tips <laughs> Well, so this is something that's been instilled in me in a long time. And I don't know if it's something that I can, you know, that I can coach, right? I don't know if it's something I could persuade people, but there's something uh, very, very specific about the way that we carry a relationship. And the answer to the question is business is business and friendship is friendship. So I have no issue in my partnership, either letting them know my opinion or getting their opinion laid on to me <laughs> because that's what makes our business better. And, you know, I, it happened to me, you know, at a certain point in my life where I realized, you know, this person's not yelling at me they're, or they're not, you know, they're not angry at me. What they're trying to do is make me better. And that's what this is about. When, when we, we separate the friendship and the business, um, it, it's, it's a total game changer. Now, the thing is you have to, you know, you have to have that type of mindset. Uh, because most businesses are, you know, friendships and relationships uh, with, with um, you know, maybe partners, they don't always work out that way. Um, there's a lot of emotional tension. Um, and, you know, something that, that we do very well also is uh, we're together a lot and we're also away from each other a lot, right? We have a lot of different locations that we work out of. Uh, we have an office, we have home offices, we, we travel, we, uh, we have event locations. So, you know, when we get together, we really try to make sure that what we're doing is fun. Because if it's not fun, why are we doing it? And I think that's that's kind of part of what's helping us, uh, and that's really thrusting our success is that we keep keep having fun, uh, and we don't have to have those really bad conversations that you know that we don't want to have. Yeah, and and we we all experience it, guys. When you are together, you are complimenting each other so nicely and you refer to each other and you support each other. There is a lot of positivity in every single event that we attend. And I encourage everyone to go to your Facebook page and there you see all the promo videos where you guys like really playing around with that. So I can see that you're having lots of fun together. So my last question would be related to all of those beautiful retreats and events and courses and, and coaching things that you're running for who are those programs or services that you offer? That is a really great question. <laughs> so here's the thing about our business. Um, we're really good at helping small to medium sized businesses. We're really good at helping uh, coach the coaches or coach the speakers. But what we're, what we're truly deep down looking for is that all around entrepreneur that's just looking to have more success. They're looking to have more success right now. Right? We're not looking for people that are not willing to take the risk or not willing to you know, put in the time, the energy, the consistency, the focus, all that drive. We're looking for people that want to take their business to the next level um, and, and have faith in us and have trust in us. So you know, that's the beauty about what we do. We help people from all around the world in, you know, in many different countries. And, and I was at the doctor's office the other day. And I said, I, I could tell you at one point in, in my career, I, I've helped uh, Australia's largest avocado manufacturer. And at one point in my career, I've helped a doctor. You know, those couldn't be two more different career fields, but they have something very similar in mind. They're both entrepreneurs and they were both looking to succeed and grow their businesses immediately. And that's why they came to us. It makes a lot of sense. Now, finally, to close off, what is the one single biggest life lesson that you want to share with our audience to remember? <laughs> the one single <laughs> biggest life lesson. No pressure here, right? No yeah. pressure. Uh, <laughs> oh, why, so, Joey? Tell yeah. us. Uh, let's say that you can't control being smarter or wealthier than all of the people next to you. But what you can control is how hard that you try, right? There's a, a, an American baseball player. His name is Derek Jeter. And he once said, there may be people who have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. And I truly believe that. I know when I get into a room or I get into a competition or no matter what it is, that I'm not the smartest person, I'm not the fastest person, I'm not the tallest person, but there is no way that they are gonna be trying harder than me. And that's why I can always outlast them. Awesome. I really like that live lesson. Well, you are definitely the person who speaks the fastest. Uh, there's someone who could potentially beat me um, as, long, as long as you will start speaking Czech. We can definitely run that competition. 
<laughs> Joey, that being said, where can people reach out to you? Where can people find you? Where can they subscribe and join your event? Of course, there's a plethora of places that you can reach out to us. Me personally, I'm on Facebook at Coach Joey Falcone, F-A-L-C-O-N-E. On Instagram, I'm at Coach Joey F. And most importantly, you can reach us on our Facebook page, which is iCoachingConsulting.com and even our website, iCoachingConsulting. So I as the I as not yes. the E Y E. Yep. Brilliant, brilliant. Just wanted to clear it out. Yeah. <laughs> Joey, thank you so much for being with us, for sharing all your wisdom with us. We had I a lot of fun. Time. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Joey. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> It was so much fun talking to Joey again. Two years ago, I told myself, if I can create a life where I have fun and meaningful conversations every day, I'll be a happy man. And this was typically one such example. We had fun and we learned so much at the same time. I recommend that you keep following Joey because he shares lots of valuable content on social media and also via email. Joey's content makes you think about your business in a new way. So make sure that you feed your mind with his materials. To stay in touch, go to www.icoachingconsulting.com and sign up for their inspirational emails. That is E-Y-E coachingconsulting.com. Make sure you also connect with them on Facebook and Instagram so you get your daily portion of business inspiration. At the beginning of this episode, we told you about our transformational how to work stress-free methodology. Now, take a moment to think about the following. What is the number one thing that you would like to improve about your life or business? A key part of our methodology is the ultimate prioritization system, which helps you stop wasting time and achieve any goal you set for yourself. If you are serious about achieving the goal that you just thought of, we have great news for you. We give you the opportunity to participate in our unique one-off three-part online masterclass where we share our best materials with you. There are limited seats available, so make sure you enroll right now on earnmoreworkless.com slash stress-free masterclass. We even given away an awesome bonus when you enroll now on earnmoreworkless.com slash stress-free masterclass. You will find out exactly what it is. Thanks again for joining us on the Influential Executive Podcast. We love hearing your thoughts, your feedback, your ideas. So please, right now, let us know your thoughts in the comments or simply send us an email. We're sending you much love from Amsterdam. Have a fun and successful week. Now let's all go out, serve other people, and have fun. <laughs>